the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these, adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I previously warned you, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Very, very clear passage of Scripture. Those who practice, those who live their lives doing these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what it says here in this passage. Is Lordship salvation biblical? Absolutely. The Bible is very clear as I've shown you here in the Word of God. Hey guys, quick video explaining Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. A passage often misused and misinterpreted to teach a works-based salvation, to teach that you can lose your salvation, which of course is not true. The Word of God says in Galatians chapter 5, starting off in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. First and foremost, it is imperative to identify the audience being addressed. Who is Paul speaking to here? In Galatians chapter 4, verse 31, Paul identifies them as brethren. He states, We are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free, referring to the fact that they are children of God, sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Paul compels them to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ, watch this, hath made us free. That's past tense. They have been made free by Jesus Christ. They are brethren. They are children of God, sons of God. In verses 11 and 13 of Galatians chapter 5, he again identifies and addresses them as brethren. These are the saved. These are believers. Paul compels the saved to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made them free. He instructs them to use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another and encourages them to walk in the Spirit, implying that they have the Spirit. They are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. They have been sealed with the Spirit unto the day of redemption. A contrast is drawn between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. It's important to understand that as believers, positionally speaking, we are in the Spirit. We are not in the flesh. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. On the other hand, unbelievers have not the Spirit of Christ. They are not indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. And because of that, they cannot walk in the Spirit. They are positionally in the flesh and cannot please God. At the moment of salvation, believers are indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God and are thereby enabled to walk in the Spirit as to not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The believer has two natures, the flesh and the Spirit, the old man and the new man, the body of this death and that which is born of God that cannot sin, according to 1 John chapter 3. This is imperative to understand. These two natures, the flesh and the Spirit, are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would or that ye want. Paul describes this constant struggle between his flesh and his spirit in Romans chapter 7. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, 
but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now the works of the flesh should be indicative of someone who is in the flesh, someone who has not the Spirit of Christ. That is not to say, I repeat, that is not to say that a believer cannot or will not do such things as listed in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. Our flesh is more than capable of committing such works. However, Paul's point is that if we are indwelt with the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ, which we are, if we are washed, if we are sanctified, if we are truly justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God, which we are, if we have believed on Jesus Christ, if our old man is crucified with him per Romans chapter 6 verse 6, shouldn't we no longer be the servants of sin? Paul's hope in this passage is that through the understanding of their position in Christ, they would be provoked to walk accordingly. I'll say that again. Paul's hope in this passage is that through the understanding of our position in Christ, we as believers, we as the saved, we as children of God, sons of God, we would be provoked to walk accordingly. knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Folks, we have to understand that the believer has two natures, the flesh and the spirit. This flesh, this body of death is prone to sin. It cannot please God. This corruption cannot inherit incorruption. My flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Your flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. But thanks be to God through salvation in Jesus Christ, we've been born again by the Spirit of God, and now we are enabled to walk in the Spirit as to not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Understanding our position in Christ, let us be provoked to walk in newness of life. If we live in the Spirit, which we do as believers, let us also walk in the Spirit.